is right there for you live on Hulu with stories of strength, stories of hope. Because now when it matters most, Hulu has live news. Hulu has live news. Hulu has live news. And that news is ABC News. ABC News Live on Hulu. ABC News Live on Hulu. Watch the news you need. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Streaming to all Hulu subscribers right now. 20 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine have been sent to states, but 500 million more are needed, leaving some asking. Should we delay the second dose of a vaccine to get more people vaccinated quickly? And adjust the rules so more people can get their shots sooner. Then, Dr. Oz, your sandwich is ready. They're the System 21 approved drive through and takeout meals that won't derail your diet. People love these. Dr. Oz, Monday at 3 on KITV. Aloha, Kaniala, Danny Klaikini. If you need Medicare insurance, call Premier Benefit Consultants. You know, this Kamaaina company represents more Medicare Advantage plans than anyone else in Hawaii. And will give you good advice for free. They believe in family, integrity, and exceptional service. Old school, local style. Contact Premier Benefit Consultants for Medicare advice you need and service you deserve. Mahalo. It was just a dead stop. It's the first time that I haven't worked in since I was 15 years old. Open up, close again, open up, close again. We are done. Our restaurant is closed due to corona. I've had to move back in with my parents. To get back to real life, I'm pretty much willing to do anything. To be that selfish and still be like, okay, we're just going to party and nothing matters. It's a bummer. We have to do it if we want these tears to just open up more. The more we work together, the quicker we can get out of this. Digital news on demand, KITV.com. Now, from KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Right now in Good Morning Hawaii, the fallout from the Capitol chaos continues. President Donald Trump banned from Twitter for inciting that mob while more arrests are being made in connection to those riots. And one of those arrests, a local Proud Boy extremist and former Republican State House candidate Nick Oakes taken in by federal agents as soon as he landed back here in Hawaii. The charges he's now facing for his role in those Capitol riots. And Maui preparing for a surge in COVID-19 cases, how they're expanding resources to make sure hospitals on the Valley Isle are not overwhelmed. Good morning, Hawaii. A lot to get to on your Saturday morning. Uh, lots to get you caught up on. Thanks for joining us for Hawaii's only weekend morning newscast. I'm Tom George. Aloha kakahiaka. I'm Annalisa Burgos. President Donald Trump is now banned from Twitter after reportedly using the social media platform to announce policy changes, spread misinformation, and more. ABC's Karina Mitchell has those details. President Trump permanently suspended from Twitter. The social network says it's because of remarks over Wednesday's raid on the Capitol and that his comments could further incite violence. The president reacting to the decision in a statement saying he will not be silenced, teasing a new platform. Twitter's move follows Facebook and Instagram, which also suspended the president's accounts. Those bans are indefinite, lasting at least through the inauguration. The American Civil Liberties Union expressing concern, saying that although the president can turn to other media outlets, those less fortunate who've been censored won't have the same opportunity. It's calling for transparency, saying the rules should be applied equally to everyone. Five people died in Wednesday's rioting, including one police officer, just hours after the president held a rally and urged his supporters to march to the Capitol. And with more than a week left in office, Democrats appear to be moving forward with impeachment, already drawing up an impeachment resolution. President-elect Biden says that's up to Congress, but adding there is an alternative. The quickest way that that will happen is us being sworn in on the 20th. But South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, a Trump supporter, tells Fox News' Sean Hannity the president-elect should take action. President-elect Biden, it's up to you. Pick up the phone, call Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and the squad and tell them, stand down. This will destroy the country even further. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Well, federal murder investigation has now been opened into the death of U.S. Capitol Police Officer, the, the police officer that died following the riot in Washington. 
Brian Sicknick joined the Capitol Police back in July of 2008 and recently served in the department's first responders unit. Flags at the Capitol were flown at half staff on Friday in his honor. And the man who was photographed sitting at the desk of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has been arrested. Richard Barnett faces three federal charges, including theft of public property, violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds, and knowingly entering and remaining in a restricted building. The FBI says he left a note for the Speaker and removed some of her mail. Well, an Oahu resident connected to the insurrection at the Capitol has also been arrested. Nick Oakes is the head of the Hawaii chapter of the Proud Boys, a right-wing extremist group. He was arrested by federal agents at the airport soon after landing back here in Hawaii. He posted this selfie on Twitter, smoking a cigarette inside the Capitol, and charging documents claim he admitted to walking into the Capitol after being seen in these pictures with other rioters. Now, back here at home, shocked reaction from his neighbors in Waikiki who saw him gaining national notoriety. When I watched on TV what was happening at the Capitol the other day, my, it broke my heart. And then I started to look after the shock of what they were doing, and I started to see people I thought I recognized, and I thought, oh, please, you know, I mean, that's, they're in Washington. But I saw that guy, and I was like, he lives across the street. Oh, my God, I voted for him. Now, as that neighbor just alluded to, Oaks was also the Republican candidate for the Waikiki-based State House District 22. It's a vote, by the way, that neighbor says she now regrets. Oaks lost that race to Democrat Adrian Tam after his history with the Proud Boys became an issue in that campaign. We'll have more on Oaks and the charges he's now facing. That's coming up in the next half hour of Good Morning Hawaii. Well, the time now, 6.04 a.m. The images of the chaos at our nation's capital this week can bring up a number of emotions, and you may be wondering how to talk to your children about it all. Mandy Gaither has more on what parents should keep in mind. Riots and destruction, anger and fear. Americans watched an attack on the nation's capital this week by supporters of President Donald Trump. The image is hard to see, especially for children. There are many teachable moments in this and it's quite a challenge to show just enough of the information to be able to teach on but not so much that you create a sensation of children not feeling safe. Ken Yeager, director of the Stress, Trauma, and Resilience Program at the Ohio State Wexner Medical Center says whether to show what happened to the youngest Americans depends on the child based on age, maturity level, and other factors. He says if you do decide to share what's going on, listen to what the child has to say. And I think it's important for adults to acknowledge to their kids I'm having some of the same feelings you are too. Maybe not to the same degree, maybe to a greater degree, but assuring the child that this is a normal response to an abnormal circumstance. Jaeger also says to limit exposure so that it's not overwhelming and make your child feel safe by grounding them in the moment. Just because there are bad things going on around you, doesn't necessarily mean it's coming directly toward you. Finally, when it comes to feelings about these images, let your child know they can always come to you to talk. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Yeah, just hard to imagine how kids in the future will uh, read about this in the history books. All right, well, uh, turning now to your weekend forecast, here's a live look outside at Honolulu. The sun still not quite up yet, but we want to know how your day is shaping up. So let's hop, hop on over to Maui for a first check of weather with meteorologist Malika Dudley. Hey, Malika. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yes, here on Maui, the sun has not risen yet either, um, but it's comfortable. It's comfortable because we don't have very much in the way of winds. So let's take a look at the big picture right now and show you exactly what's happening out there so you can understand what our weather is going to be like today. So um, we have a front. It's just to the north of the state. That is what's cutting off our trade winds. And what that means for us is the light and variable wind conditions. And that is what we expect today. High clouds are streaming overhead, which is likely to bring us a gorgeous sunrise this morning. So if you are up up and watching us make sure to open those curtains up and uh, take a peek outside as the sun rises moisture associated with this front could reach the island of Kauai today increasing chances for rainfall there 
because conditions are a bit unstable near the Big Island with a disturbance lingering nearby. Afternoon clouds and showers are possible for the island of Hawaii as well. Otherwise, just pop up isolated afternoon showers for the rest of the state. But generally speaking, we're expecting dry conditions. Radar shows that moisture, though, up to the north. So we will keep an eye on that and let you know if anything changes with the forecast. For now, radar is showing just some light pop-up showers. That's what the green indicates on this um, map here. So our eight-day forecast shows that we will hold on to those light and variable winds through the day today. Tomorrow will be a transition day, according to the latest models, which means we'll move back into breezy conditions. And well, in the 10 to 15 mile per hour range, maybe some pluses, which means the land and sea breeze pattern that we expect today, the humid conditions, will shift back to our more typical windward showers overnight and into the early mornings. Back to you. Well, time now, 6.08. The state expects 73% of Hawaii's population to have access to the COVID-19 vaccine by early summer. This is the state, uh, state Department of Health's updated vaccination plan. You see it right there. Healthcare personnel and long-term care facility residents have the highest priority. After them, that's followed by frontline essential workers and kupuna, 75 years and older. Now, the last group under phase one are adults 65 to 74 years old. Now, and anyone with 16 and older with high risk medical conditions and all other essential workers. So that's phase one. Phase two is expected to start this summer and would cover everybody else, the general population. Now, at last check, the state has received more than 91,000 doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. More than 35,000 people have already been vaccinated in our state. The health department is expecting another order of Pfizer's vaccine to come in next week. And the time now, 6.09 a.m. Last night during our 6.30 coronavirus special, Dr. Scott Miskovich of Premier Medical Group Hawaii joined us live to discuss two new coronavirus strains, one of which has already spread to the U.S. We do expect that we will have a variant that will spread throughout the United States, especially the UK variant, which is now popping up everywhere. It is more contagious, anywhere from 50 to 70% more contagious. And then the other variant, the South African variant right now, we're concerned that it might make the vaccine slightly less effective. Well, Dr. Miskovich urges Hawaii residents to stay prepared. He also says the variant will be here, but that it won't change anything. And today, residents and staff at the Manoa Gardens elderly care homes will get their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. CVS will send pharmacists to go door to door for residents who cannot leave their units or don't feel safe doing so. And now to your coronavirus numbers. Here's a breakdown. The State Department of Health reported 264 new cases of COVID-19. So here's the island by island breakdown. 202 on Oahu, 22 on Maui, 10 on the Big Island, 3 on Kauai, 2 on Molokai, and 25 residents were diagnosed while they were out of state. Now, uh, four more residents have also died. That brings our state death total to 303. Now, the state's positivity rate is at 3.4%, and there are nearly 2,000 uh, 2, presumed active cases across the island. Well, Maui Memorial Medical Center says it's ready to take on more COVID-19 patients if it needs to. CEO Michael Rembis says the facility is currently ready to take in more than 200 additional patients. And even if all hospital beds are filled, the hospital's surge plan can create up to 100 more. Right now, only 4.5% of ICU beds are occupied. Rembis is optimistic the vaccine can help control the number of infections. Even though we're in the middle of a surge, the vaccination provides us a very optimistic outlook for 2021. The more people that get vaccinated, not only are they going to protect themselves, their family and friends and the community, uh, it's going to change this pandemic for, and move it away in a positive way. Maui Memorial has already administered more than a thousand doses of the COVID-19 vaccine to healthcare workers. Rumba says hundreds of people, including essential workers and seniors over the age of 75, are expected to be vaccinated starting next week.
You know, a lot of people have been asking what this means for our schools. Well, the Hawaii State Teachers Association wants the state to revise its school learning models. So right now, it's based on two sets of seven-day uh, daily averages that end each Wednesday. But the union says because of the lag in reporting, Thursday's count of more than 300 cases will not be factored in right away. That leaves Oahu schools in blended learning mode. HSTA President Corey Rosenley says if the seven-day rolling average was used instead, elementary schools would be in blended learning and secondary schools would be learning from home. All right, the time now, 6.13 a.m. A local filmmaker's newest project is threatened by the pandemic. Yeah, coming up, see how the Hawaii International Film Festival stepped in to make his dreams a reality. Time now, 6.13. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back on your Saturday morning. In today's hectic world, we could all use a little more easy. Like our easy-to-use mobile app. It helps you manage accounts on the go. Our digital wallet and contactless Visa credit card make cashless transactions easy. Our website lets you easily book in-branch appointments. And our secure palm scanner is an easy way to confirm your ID. So when life gets a little hectic, easy. Hawaii State FCU, always right by you. It may be time to pack away the tree, but that doesn't mean the excitement is over. The fireworks are just beginning at Ashley Home Store Hawaii's New Year's Sale. Save up to $500 and get 12 months financing. Let us help you fulfill your New Year's resolution to update your home with great deals on sectionals, sofas, bedroom groups, TV stands, and many more quality home furnishings. Save up to $500 and get 12 months financing during the New Year's Sale. Happening now at Ashley Home Store Hawaii. This is home. You never know when your pet will need help. Uh, our dog is breathing funny. I've, I've never seen her like this. That's why, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, my Pahu Wekele Pet Hospital is open and ready with a vet on duty to provide all the loving care your pet needs right away. My Pahu Wekele Pet Hospital. Write this number down, 671-7171, and keep it next to your phone, because you never know when your pet will need help. Experience the ultimate in durability and award-winning designs with Prism, the latest in luxury flooring from Armstrong. Dent, scratch, and stain-resistant, Prism flooring is also 100% waterproof, protecting against spills and pets. Choose from 20 uniquely crafted designs where realistic textures combine for the ultimate natural look. To learn more about Prism luxury flooring, visit our showroom today and experience the Abbey difference. We care. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back, everybody. The time now, 6.15 a.m. Local filmmaker Christopher Kahunahana spent years crafting his feature film, Waikiki. Yeah, it was finally set to make its debut in 2020, but then 2020 happened. The pandemic threatened to push it off the silver screen. But because they're in it together, KITV4's Maleko McDonald reports the Hawaii International Film Festival stepped up to share his film. Chris, it's great to talk with you. Uh, thanks for chatting with me today. You know, 2020 presented a lot of challenges, uh, not just for business owners, but for filmmakers. Uh, tell me about what would have been the wide release of Waikiki. Uh, you know, it's interesting to release a film in a uh, pandemic situation. Um, you know, our world premiere was in New York uh, at the Urban World Film Festival, and that's usually, you know, a high-profile festival where there's a red carpet event, there's, you know, a lot of celebrities, and one of the biggest parts of getting to premiere a film at a festival is the networking opportunities, so you get to meet other filmmakers, uh, producers, other uh, people who are interested in what you're doing. It was strange uh, premiering the film not being in New York City, uh, sitting in my living room alone, because actually at that point in time, we couldn't even gather in our own houses. So uh, it, was a, it was a strange experience uh, premiering your first feature film in my surf shorts, to say the least. But I think along with it, uh, HIF did a great job. They did give us the opportunity to screen it uh, in a theater. That was really important to me because uh, to make a film, it takes a village, everyone knows that. So the, all the people who got to work on the film or, you know, I had the opportunity to work with on the film, got to see the film in person together. And that, you know, communal experience is really what filmmaking is about.
that change in the way they release the film it does present a bit of a benefit because HIF now has the opportunity to stream that film again, which is something they're doing this week. Yeah, we were blessed. I uh, want to thank HIF and the jury and uh, Nichols Family Film Fund for uh, you know awarding us the best feature film and best cinematography. The film is screening again as part of the Hanaho Picture Show, and it's uh, screening with all the other award winners, including Kobai Mahu, uh, Hoi and Soul. So we're excited about that. So people, if you hadn't had the opportunity to see it in the theater, this is uh, because of the situation, you'll get a chance to see it again this week and from the 6th, January 6th to the 10th. Film Waikiki, an award-winning film now for Hanaho presentation with the Hawaii International Film Festival. For KTV4 Island News, I'm Malika McDonald. All right, Malako. Aloha. Thank you. All right. Well, the Hanaho Picture Show plays this week on the HIF website, and you can find a link to it on our website, KITV.com. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Mm -hmm. pretty, pretty exciting stuff. All right. Well, time now, 618 Sunrise Paddlers capturing some pretty incredible footage. Yeah, coming up, we'll show you the up close encounter all caught on camera. Stay with us. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii. During this time of uncertainty, we all are being affected by this pandemic. Right now, our community is pushing to improve our lifestyles and build better foundations. We understand that here at Select the Stone, our purpose has always been to supply the best flooring and countertop products at affordable rates. And we've done so for the last 20 years as the leader of the prefabricated countertop industry. Select the Stone is determined to beautify your living spaces and help you construct a higher quality of life. It's here. Instant funding online from speedycash.com. Apply for a loan using the Speedy Cash app. If approved, funds apply to your debit card in minutes. Get instant funding from speedycash.com. I was really looking forward to graduation. I worked at a restaurant out on the west side. I was accepted into an art college in California. I was so excited to go. All of that got taken away in a flash. We had to apply for unemployment. It felt just so uncertain. People could be taking this virus a little more seriously. So that we can get back to doing all the things that we want to enjoy. Real life for me would be able to dorm, hugging my friends, getting back to reality. Hey, how's it? It's me, Puka, your favorite barhole. The rainy season is here, and so am I, ready to bust up your ride. So if you want to roll, you got to pay the pothole toll. <laughs> Potholes giving you grief? Come into Lex Brody's for relief. We're like your family doctor for your car. Our tire and service warranties and legendary customer service will help protect you and your money from those pothole blues. Visit LexBrody's.com for super saver specials on Michelin tires and auto services. And thank you very much. It's here. Instant funding online from speedycash.com. Apply for a loan using the Speedy Cash app. If approved, funds apply to your debit card in minutes. Get instant funding from speedycash.com. This is Good Morning Hawaii. You don't get much closer than that. Some uh, guides from Mauna Lani Resort were doing one of their sunrise paddles on New Year's Eve when they spotted a humpback whale about half a mile from shore and waters off the Big Island. The resort says it all happened about 10 minutes into their paddle. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 did, I did see some whales when I went to Maui at uh, Molokini Crater, but from far yeah. away. Not that close, though. Yeah, me too. I just got back from Maui, actually, and I got to see uh, meteorologist De Malika Dudley actually in person for the first time. So that was amazing. Um, and here's a live look, actually, at Hilo Bay. It looks, uh, looks like flurries raining out there. Pretty cold, but meteorologist Malika Dudley standing by now with an update on the first for surf forecast. It was good to see you, Malika. I think our kids had too much fun.
it was so good to see you too. And I know we were talking about how both of our kids um, are basically isolated at home. So we wore masks, but they got to play with other kids. And it was so awesome to see them have such a great time. All right, surf wise, we have a rising northwest swell in the forecast. I want to show you these shots though, because they are so impressive. Take a look at this from Thursday's large swell. Maui's own Kai Lenny wing surfing Pe'ahi, also known as Jaws. And yes, he did land this. I mean, it's Kai Lenny, guys. Keeping it all in the family, Kai's brother, Ridge Lenny, also got an epic barrel. Today, a new north-northwest swell will build quickly through the afternoon with surf reaching advisory levels. Models are showing us starting out in the 8 to 12 foot face range, but rising to 16 to 20 foot faces for north shores. On average, we'll start out around 5 to 7 for west shores and hit about 10 to 14 by end of day. 2 to 4 out east, 0 to 2 for our south shores where we could see some box jellyfish lingering about. Um, keep in mind that for Maui and the Big Island, smaller waves are expected for especially our west sides, but also north shores. Although our current swell could rise to advisory levels for the Big Island by tonight. So we're tracking several different swells. We've got one expected, as I said, rising today. We've got another one expected for north and west facing shores as early as Monday afternoon. And that should hold at advisory levels into Tuesday. Then an even larger one potentially warning level by Thursday we'll keep an eye on it of course and bring you the latest we'll be back right after the break Paul Drews news and weather weekends on KITV4 Island News no one knows what the future holds so let's protect what we have protect the people we love the cars we drive the homes we live in and the businesses we work so hard to build. At Dietrich Insurance, we're here to protect Hawaii and the local customers we're privileged to serve. So let Dietrich protect what's important to you. For auto, home, and business insurance, talk to Dietrich or your insurance agent. Dietrich. Protect your home from Hawaii's next severe weather event with a new roof from Kapili Roofing. Local, family-owned Kapili Roofing has been providing peace of mind one roof at a time for over a decade. From small repairs to large commercial re-roofing projects, Kapili Roofing has the knowledge and experience to install a roof you can count on for years. Ask about our GAF Master Elite warranty and how you can earn up to 40,000 Hawaiian air miles with a new roof. Kapili Roofing, building peace of mind one, one roof, roof at a time. time. You can't avoid growing older, but you can improve how you go about it. Hi, I'm Diana Ko. Join me for stories of information or inspiration. It's the aloha, you know, and my great grandma used to always say, imua, imua aloha, which meant go forward with love. Discover insight and experience the topics that will help you in aging well, Tuesdays at 5, 6, and 10 p.m. Aging Well is sponsored by Premier Benefit Consultants the old and in with the new. It's time to refresh your home for the new year with Homeworld. Put your best foot forward into 2021 with new designs for every room in your home with amazing deals. Save up to $500 and get 12 months financing. Shop online at homeworld.com or visit us in store for professional insight to help design your dream home. Shop quality brands at great prices from a locally owned company. Refresh your home for the new year at Homeworld. Weather and traffic on Good Morning Hawaii. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Your time now, 625. A West Coast school rolls out a new invention to help in the fight against coronavirus. And a hometown hero gets immortalized with a snowy sledding hill. Jeremy Roth reports. It may seem surreal, but believe me, it's real. A Southern California university has rolled out COVID-19 test vending machines. With the pandemic still raging, regular testing has become the new normal for students at UC San Diego, where testing is now required weekly. I was uncomfortable at first, but then after doing it a bunch of times, I, I got used to it. 20th time since I've been here, <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> 
School officials say the automated machines are the first of their kind on a U.S. college campus. They allow students to access the tests easily and quickly, and after self-administering and returning the swabs, results can be received in less than two days. So far, the university has installed 11 machines across campus. Surreal as it may seem, the contactless testing options are already proving a more expedient and preferable option for many. This is super convenient. A beloved former teacher in a small Minnesota town has been immortalized in a very Minnesota way. He's had a snowy sledding hill named after him. What? Residents say 90-year-old Dean Conklin, who's also a town councilman and business owner, is like a local celebrity. Every in town knows Dean, loves Dean. So much so that a five-acre plot of land that Conklin recently gave to a former student is now a tribute to this Minnesotan man about town after it was turned into a sledding park and officially named Conklin's Hill. Along with more than 100 residents, Conklin himself turned out to test it out. So a 90-year-old guy to go down that hill? Kind of, kind of exciting. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. <laughs> That's pretty cool with the top <laughs> hat and everything. Definitely can't get that here, though. Yeah, you have to find some uh, joy in snow, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, your top morning headlines are coming up. We'll be right back. Stay with us. It's here. Instant funding online from speedycash.com. Apply for a loan using the Speedy Cash app. If approved, funds apply to your debit card in minutes. Get instant funding from speedycash.com. Aloha, Kaniawa, Danny Klaikini. If you need Medicare insurance, call Premier Benefit Consultants. You know, this Kamaaina company represents more Medicare Advantage plans than anyone else in Hawaii. And will give you good advice for free. They believe in family, integrity, and exceptional service. Old school, local style. Contact Premier Benefit Consultants for Medicare advice you need and service you deserve. Mahalo. It was the first time I've ever seen someone shoot up in front of me, and this person passed out. I didn't know how to react. And then somebody had sprayed something in his nostril. His face got some color back, started breathing. It was naloxone. It was crazy to me to know that's all that it took. I never knew that I could save life, and sometimes it's your duty to do that for somebody. Naloxone or Narcan, you could go down to your pharmacy, pick it up. You could save a life. You just need to have it on your person. At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Like how nice it is to save on your auto policy. But it's even nicer knowing that if this happens, or this happens, or this, or this, or even this, we've seen and covered it. So switch to Farmers and you could save. Get a quote today. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. So there you were, finally making some headway when the storm hit. That's when it's nice to know Speedy Cash is a good friend to have on a rainy day. Speedy Cash, we're here for you, online and in-store. Now, from KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back, everybody. Time now, 6.30 a.m. Fallout on the riots on Capitol Hill continue this morning. Yeah, many lawmakers outraged over that security breach, and they want to find out what went wrong. ABC's Faith Abube is in D.C. with the questions being asked right now. This morning, lawmakers livid and questioning what led to this catastrophic security failure during the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol. Obviously, it was a failure, um, or you would not have had people enter the, the Capitol building by breaking windows and terrorizing the members of Congress. The D.C. mayor and Representative Tim Ryan among the many now calling for a detailed congressional investigation. Where was the support? Where were the backup? Uh, units that needed to be there from the National Guard units from uh, the states around Washington, D.C. and Washington, D.C. Where were they? ABC News has learned three days before the attack, the D.C. government requested additional security from the Department of Defense, but Capitol Police declining the extra personnel ahead of the January 6th Trump rally because there was, quote, no indication of significant violent protests. But on social media, many warnings, including this one from President Trump saying it would be wild. And sure enough, it was. A pro-Trump mob breaching Capitol security. 
desecrating the halls of Congress and terrorizing lawmakers inside. But the law enforcement response hours into the violent insurrection, a sharp contrast to how they handled this June 1st peaceful protest for racial justice in Lafayette Square, where the peaceful demonstrators were peppered with rubber pellets, pro-Trump rioters at the Capitol taking selfies with some officers in the background. And then one officer holding the door open as rioters walked away, threatening officers on the way out. Despite repeated requests for comments from ABC News, still no response from Capitol Police. And overnight, the Pentagon releasing details about who did what in the botched response to the brazen attack on the Capitol. And as the fallout continues this morning, the Capitol Police Chief and both the Sergeant at Arms in the House and the Senate have resigned. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. All right, we'll take a look at this. This was one of the most watched videos during those Capitol riots, all over the news, all over social media, showing rioters storming the walls of the Capitol. But there's one little detail you might have overlooked, but one that many in Hawaii's Pacific Islander community picked up on immediately. Actually, even our own photographer, Paul Omakar, who was born in Palau, noticed this right away while he was editing this video for our newscast. Take a look. It's right there in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You can see the flag of Palau with its light blue background and yellow circle being carried by one of those rioters. Well, if you spotted it, you're not alone. It has a lot of people talking right now, and there was apparently so much outrage in the Palauan community that it actually prompted the Palauan ambassador to the U.S., Hersey Kyoto, to issue a statement calling it outright wrong and unacceptable. He goes on to say, quote, to that person who carried the flag, I say, if you love the Republic of Palau, please do not embarrass her and her people. I hope I will never see our flag displayed in such a way again. Now, no word on who that mystery rioter is in that video. Yeah, interesting to see who came out. There's so many people that came out for that, uh, those riots there. Yeah. Well, meantime, Oahu resident Nick Oaks, head of the Proud Boys Hawaii chapter, is now behind bars facing federal charges from those riots. Yeah, Oaks actually made it back to Hawaii from Washington, D.C., but he didn't make it out of Daniel K. Inouye International Airport. He was immediately arrested at the airport Thursday night. Now, charging documents show he's facing federal charges of unlawful entry for his role in that insurrection. As chaos unfolded at the Capitol, thousands of miles away, many in Hawaii glued to the news in shock and disappointment. When I watched on TV what was happening at the Capitol the other day, my, it broke my heart. For Donna Lynch from Waikiki, that heartbreak quickly turned to surprise. Pictures surfaced on Twitter showing Nick Oaks smoking a cigarette inside the Capitol. Along with other pictures from CNN, Oaks was quickly identified as the head of the Hawaii chapter of the Proud Boys. Lynch quickly remembered where she'd seen his face. And then I started to look after the shock of what they were doing and I started to see people I thought I recognized and I thought oh please you know I mean that's they're in Washington but I saw that guy and I was like he lives across the street oh my god I voted for him I'm a Republican I'm not going to be a Republican anymore Lynch says Oaks seemed friendly and she wasn't aware of his connection to the Proud Boys when she voted for him when he ran as the Republican candidate for Hawaii State House Oaks's controversial views played a role in his losing that race to Democrat Adrian Tam to represent the community Still, some are surprised the UH Manoa Journalism School grad who lives in Waikiki with his wife and young son ended up at the U.S. Capitol. No matter what your views are, you shouldn't be doing the things that that person will be doing. And everyone in Waikiki takes care of each other, and it's really important to have a community, so that's not somebody that I would want in our community. You know, it's a small world. Yeah. It's a small world, and to think that he represented us in Washington, that makes me sick. Now, I did make multiple attempts to reach Oaks and his family by phone, social media, email, and at the address in Waikiki he listed when he ran for office. So far, no response. We do know that Oaks now has a lawyer, and his first appearance before a judge will happen in federal court right here in Honolulu. That hearing has been set for Monday. And in the meantime, calls to remove President Donald Trump are coming from both sides of the aisle. Yeah, law, lawmakers are uh, calling for Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Our Washington correspondent, Matt Knadler, explains how that works. 
The 25th Amendment allows for the vice president and cabinet officials to determine if the president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. Congressional Democrats are calling on Vice President Pence to move forward under that amendment, saying Wednesday's deadly riots at the U.S. Capitol by President Trump's supporters were incited by Trump himself. We will never give up. We will never concede. Every option available from evoking the 25th Amendment to impeachment and removal to criminal prosecution should all be on the table. Getting support from that cabinet officials, though, will be tough. Safer, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow, wife cleaner, of Senate Majority Leader Mitch cars. McConnell, and Education Secretary Betsy DeVos both resigned Thursday following the attacks. The majority of the cabinet is needed to oust the president, meaning a second Russian impeachment process is also on the table. If Nancy Pelosi goes ahead with impeaching the president, I would welcome the chance to vote to convict him a second time. But with just we days to go before Trump leaves office, some Republicans are saying not so fast. I don't know that doing something right now uh, makes sense to me. We are going to complete the transition of power. I mean, to come January 20th, we will have a new president, and it will be now done and completed in a peaceful way. Congress could avoid using the 25th Amendment altogether because of the language you see on your screen. This is Section 4, and it would allow President Trump to retake the presidency by submitting a written declaration that no inability exists. The vice president and cabinet would have to approve that measure. The vice president and the cabinet would then have up to four days to make that decision, creating a potential back and forth in the Trump administration over the president's ability and fitness to serve in his final days. On Capitol Hill, Matt Knadler reporting. And here's a look at the Trump administration staff that have resigned following the attack on the U.S. Capitol. 13 people have stepped down so far. And stay with KITV4 Island News for continuing coverage on this historic event. You can also follow the latest developments online and across our social media platforms when you download our free KITV4 mobile app. And turning now to coronavirus news, the state reports four more people died after being infected with COVID-19, raising the death toll to more than 300. That includes two women and two men, all between the ages of 50 and 89. All had been hospitalized with underlying health conditions. The state also reported 264 new infections, 202 on Oahu, 22 on Maui, 10 on Hawaii Island, three on Kauai, two on Molokai, and 25 residents diagnosed out of state. More than 1,900 cases are presumed active, majority of them on Oahu and in Maui County. Now, one thing not included in that latest count you heard, seven more cases reported on the Garden Isle. The Kauai District Health Officer reports all of them are residents, two adults and five children who recently traveled off island. All of them are in self-isolation and any close contacts have now been notified. There are now 20 active cases there on island. And with just 11 days until Inauguration Day, President-elect Joe Biden has come out with more details on his vaccination plan. Yeah, as ABC's Zareen Shah reports, this all comes as the U.S. is closing in on 22 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. It's an urgent attempt to help this patient breathe. They're struggling. They're struggling for every single breath. Every single breath that they take is a big expense on their body. Los Angeles County USC Medical Center's team performing numerous tracheotomies, placing a tube inside patients' necks. Often, they say, to ease them off ventilators and get them out of jam-packed hospitals. We're treading water. Every morning, my first text message is about how many beds we have in the hospital, what capacity we have, how many patients are waiting for beds not enough beds and not enough places to store those who died funeral morgues in la using refrigerated containers to help with the COVID crush throughout california and the country no signs of the pandemic slowing down just yesterday nearly 300,000 new cases nationwide i didn't think it could happen to me and than it did and it changed everything. This West Virginia mom battling the virus while pregnant and unconscious on a ventilator, missing being awake for her own child's birth. He's my fifth child, so all the moments that I shared with my other children at birth, I didn't get to share with him. Vaccinations cannot come soon enough. Nationwide, leaders frustrated. I'm not happy with where we are. But now, WHO advisors saying that second Pfizer dose can be delayed up to six weeks. 
weeks. That's up to an additional three weeks from the original recommendation. And President-elect Joe Biden now saying he will release available vaccines when he takes office, as opposed to holding half for second doses. Kentucky's governor backing the plan, assuring the public their final dose will be there. All of this as those first second shots now hit arms. Just yesterday, three sisters, all nurses at New York's Presbyterian Lawrence Hospital, getting that final shot together. Since we do everything together, it stands that we should have this vaccine together. Overseas, the situation growing more dire as the UK variant spreads. The mayor of London declaring a major incident as part of its emergency response. The capital city setting record case rates. Officials saying hospitals are overwhelmed. At least one in 30 people. In some districts, one in 15 are believed to be carrying the virus. And with the rise in cases, health leaders are urging native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders to get that vaccine. Those communities have been charting some of the highest case counts in the state. Pacific Islanders make up 4% of Hawaii's population, but they're actually accounting for a quarter of the state's infections. Dr. Neil Palafox, who is a part of a task force addressing the disproportionate number of cases in these communities, says they should get the vaccine as soon as it's available to them. Is as well thought out as it can be, scientifically sound, medically sound, and again, it protects them as individuals and as a community. Now, Palafox says some in these communities have been reluctant to get the shot out of mistrust uh, towards the government. We've, we've heard that, especially in the Native Hawaiian community before, stemming from a long history of colonialism that still impacts the well-being of these groups today. Palafox and the rest of the task force will be holding informational webinars for Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. For more information on that, we have that for you at KITV.com. All right, time to look at your weather now. Here's a live look at Hilo Bay. Uh, slowly the sun is rising. Let's check in with meteorologist Malika Dudley over on Maui. Liz, does it look like the sun is coming out for you yet, Malika? Not yet. The sky is starting to lighten up a bit, so it'll happen soon. Um, I wanted to show you more of these shots from Jaws because they are just so awe-inspiring. Up-and-coming big wave surfer Annie Rickert caught a bomb on Thursday out at Peahi, also known as Jaws. I hope I can face 2021 the way she faces big waves at Peahi. No fear. Erin <laughs> also got this gorgeous scenic shot from the area in the background. You can see the Central Valley and the West Maui Mountains. Sunrise is around 7 a.m. with some variability across the island chain, of course. Today, a front is blocking our trade, so we expect a land sea breeze type pattern. That means lots of morning sunshine, some afternoon cloud buildup, especially in leeward and interior areas. Some of those clouds could squeeze out some showers and, of course, light and variable winds in the 5 to 15 mile per hour range. Variable because in the afternoon, as sea breezes develop, the winds are on shore. And at night, when a land breeze develops, the opposite happens when shift to flowing offshore shore that could also contribute to some chilly overnight temperatures without those clouds to help blanket us in current winds are in the single digits we've got donut holes for ho'olehua kaneohe lanai city kahului and our forecast wind model shows that trend continuing today with a transition tomorrow winds picking up just a bit at that time you can expect stronger winds in areas where winds wrap around mountains or funnel through passes and valleys i will have a closer look at your eight day forecast coming up in just a little bit but now back to you tom and annalisa all hey, right the, the weather cooperated when both of us <laughs> were in maui so that's right that's and good. i did get to see the halakala sunrise oh there you go while we were there Lucky. amazing it's beautiful all right time now 6 45 a.m the blood bank of hawaii is asking survivors of covid19 for help yeah so important find out how you can help replenish hawaii's stockpile of blood plasma and help save lives Time now, 6.45. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back on your Saturday morning. Accurate and experienced KITV4's Island Weather Team. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union continues to serve all your money needs, as we've done since 1936. Although conducting business with us has changed, our commitment to Hawaii and the community is steadfast as ever. Supporting great causes such as Show Aloha Challenge and Aloha Together is only a few ways we've contributed. But truly this message is a heartfelt aloha to our dedicated staff who come to work daily to ensure that all account holders are taken care of. We appreciate you for life. Managing type 2 diabetes? You're on it. Exercising often and eating healthy? Yep, on it there too. 
You may think you're doing all you can to manage type 2 diabetes and heart disease, but could your medication do more to lower your heart risk? Jardians can reduce the risk of cardiovascular death for adults who also have known heart disease, so it could help save your life from a heart attack or stroke. And it lowers A1C. Jardians can cause serious side effects, including dehydration, genital yeast or urinary tract infections, and sudden kidney problems. Ketoacidosis is a serious side effect that may be fatal. A rare but life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this bacterial infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. And don't take it if you're on dialysis or have severe kidney problems. Taking Jardians with a sulfonuria or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Lower A1C and lower risk of a fatal heart attack? On it. With Jardians. Ask your doctor about Jardians. Hurry in for the final days of our Peace of Mind semi-annual clearance sale at all three Inspiration locations. Select floor models up to 50% off. Interest-free financing up to 12 months. And doorbuster deals on last chance 2020 closeouts. Super low prices, final days, plus $200 instant Mahalo savings with your $50 Hawaii Food Bank donation. Hawaii's best value of quality home furnishings. Inspiration, Honolulu, Kapolei, Pro Ridge Center. Peace of Mind Clearance Sale, up to 50% off at Inspiration. This is Good Morning Hawaii. With a rising number of COVID-19 cases in the state, the Blood Bank of Hawaii is asking survivors for help. Less than 1% of those who've recovered from the virus have donated their potentially life-saving blood plasma. I found out why and what's being done to find more donors. There are many reasons people don't donate blood. Fear, no time, low iron level or weight, or their health or travel history disqualifies them. Ooh, what are you holding? Is that for blood already? Oh, I donated blood. blood for the first time last month. Couple Despite my fear of needles, I found the process relatively process. painless. So, so Addressing fears and uncertainty is a challenge for some blood drive blood. organizers. Well, you have to reach out and, you know, can, you know, correct the myth and then be really specific on the information you're putting out. And I think that awareness is like the, the main thing. A lot of people not really, you know, wanted to um, go and look for it or sometimes they just think and they just assume things. They said reaching out to people directly instead of putting out social media blasts helped them sign up more donors. Hawaii's community is very relationship based. Right? It's in order to get things done, it's really like who you know, really making that connection. It's a lesson they believe will work for collecting plasma from COVID-19 survivors. The Blood Bank of Hawaii says only about 200 of the more than 22,000 residents who've tested positive for COVID-19 have donated their plasma, the yellow liquid part of blood that contains antibodies that can help save other patients. Number one, we need to stockpile an inventory for Hawaii because we are the only providers for Hawaii. Our current stockpile is growing, but number two, there is a national shortage. And so uh, we have been asked by our, uh, our brothers and sister blood centers and hospitals in California. Other challenges, not all patients can donate. You have to be healthy and have recovered from COVID for 28 days. They also have to work around donors' schedules. If you're busy working, it's very hard to take out time out of your day. The other thing is creating spaces that are accessible to them. So like I said, working with their churches because they already attend or know those sites. Lieutenant Governor Josh Green says the state's working with Pacific Islander and Filipino leaders to find more donors and hopes his experience will motivate others. It felt good to do it because, you know, the cases in the hospital, of which there are 110 today, a lot of those individuals could benefit from it. The, the medications are good that are out there, but this is something that's natural and it's a direct treatment. So it would be good for us to lead the lead the country. Well, January is National Blood Don Donor Month, and KITV4 is proud to partner with the Blood Bank of Hawaii as part of our ongoing Ho'okupu campaign. And this month, we urge you to give a pint if you can. You can donate plasma or blood, and to make an appointment with the Blood Bank, more information can be found at kitv.com slash give. And Malika, I know... 
uh, I was freaked out by needles at first, but giving blood was a good idea. You know, made me feel good, especially since it saved my life. How about you, Malika? You know, um, a couple years ago, a friend of mine decided that that was one of her 19 for 2019, that she would give blood every time she could that year, and we would make a date and go and give blood. So since COVID started, they haven't been bringing the blood bank over to Maui. They came back um, a couple of months ago, so we got to donate blood, and we hope to see them back so that we can donate again. Unfortunately, I don't have the COVID, or maybe fortunately, <laughs> I don't have the COVID plasma to donate. Um, but yes, please donate blood. All right, let's get to weather. So let's look at our forecast rainfall totals, show you this map right here where you can see that we don't expect much. However, keep in mind that weather is a bit iffy right now. We've got a front to the north. We've got instability to the south. So generally dry conditions expected, but there is a chance for showers for Kauai and Maui County because of that front and a chance for showers for Kona because of the disturbance. Our current temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. It's pretty chilly up here in the Pukalani Kula area. You can see we're in the 60s across most of our airport locations, the only exception being Kailua Kona with a 72 degree temperature. And our 8-day forecast shows light and variable winds today into tomorrow, which will be a transition day back to trade wind conditions. But that is expected to be short-lived as winds are expected to weaken and shift, maybe even southerly by Tuesday, potentially followed by a frontal passage Wednesday and Thursday, and then losing our winds yet again by the end of the week and into next weekend. We'll be back right after the break. KITV4 Island Weather, sponsored by Kapili Roofing and Painting. Protect your home from Hawaii's next severe weather event with a new roof from Kapili Roofing. Local, family-owned Kapili Roofing has been providing peace of mind one roof at a time for over a decade. From small repairs to large commercial re-roofing projects, Kapili Roofing has the knowledge and experience to install a roof you can count on for years. Ask about our GAF Master Elite warranty and how you can earn up to 40,000 Hawaiian Air miles with a new roof. Kapili Roofing, building peace of mind one, one roof, roof at, at a time. time. The Honolulu Museum of Art has been a part of our community for nearly 100 years. Explore a world-class collection of art that spans the ages and teaches us about the world we live in. Enjoy the galleries, cafe, and shop during the day and experience the art and museum courtyards at night with new extended weekend hours and free for Kama'aina every Pau Hana Friday. The Honolulu Museum of Art, an oasis of art, culture, history, and education right here in the heart of Honolulu. I have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now, there's Sky Rizzi. Things are getting clearer. Yeah, I feel free to bear my skin. Yeah, that's on me. Nothing in me go hand in hand. Nothing on my skin. That's my new plan. Nothing is everything. Keep your skin clearer with Sky Rizzi. With Sky Rizzi, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. Of those, nearly nine out of ten sustained it through one year. And Sky Rizzi is four doses a year after two starter doses. I see nothing in a different way. And it's my moment, so I just gotta stay. Nothing is everything. Sky Rizzi may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Now is the time to ask your dermatologist about Sky Rizzi. You were Pro Bowl snob, but I think that was the, around Hawaii at least, you know, we are biased. Is that something you even think about? But yeah, do you feel like you're a little bit of a snob? Well, definitely. I mean, I feel like the past three years I've been a snob, but, uh, you know, it's just added fuel to the fire. He might not have been selected as a Pro Bowler, but DeForest Buckner was named an NFL All-Pro. The Indianapolis Colts defensive tackle on the first team for the first time in his career. What a year the Punahou grad had at his position nine and a half sacks was the most in the history of the Colts 10 tackles for loss and two forced fumbles in his first season in Indianapolis 
His team is getting ready for a run at the Lombardi Trophy Saturday morning. They lead off an unprecedented six-game wildcard weekend on the road at Buffalo. Last season as a San Francisco 49er, he had a sack and a half in the Super Bowl. They took a 10-point lead going into the fourth quarter before the Chiefs stormed back for the victory. You know, last year got so close, and now you got that first taste of it again. Yeah, is it just kind of fuel to the fire here? You're just kind of ready to, you know, ready to get that? Yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah, last year, you know, um, being so close uh, and letting the Super Bowl slip between our, our fingers, I mean, it it definitely hurt, but it definitely fueled a fire, you know, in me throughout the offseason. And I'm um, coming into this season and um, being, you know, with a new team and having a new opportunity, man, I'm, I'm very excited. For the full weekend NFL wild card schedule, visit our website at KITV.com. For the first time in nearly three weeks, the Rainbow Warrior basketball team got to go up against someone else other than themselves. A trip to UC Riverside to finally get the Big West Conference schedule started. You'd think they'd be a little rusty, but the better adjective was hungry. This team was ready. They got a victory over the Highlanders, 88-83. to You wait, shot nearly 50% in this basketball game against statistically one of the best defensive teams in the country. After a four-point lead at the break, they went out and shot nearly 60% from the field in the second half. Took a 12-point advantage, nearing four minutes to go. It did get a little too close for comfort, but were clutched from the free throw line and able to hold it down in the final stretch. In his first career start, senior transfer James Jean Marie led the team with 24 points. They got eight straight from him when he was needed most. 21 from Junior Madu. The junior also brought down a team high seven rebounds these two teams will meet again on saturday two in the afternoon hawaii time